Are wildlife parks really better than zoos? As a zookeeper, it always struck me as odd when visitors would tell me that we weren't really a zoo. Now, I kind of understood what they meant. There are a lot of different names, zoos, safari parks, wildlife parks, and sometimes it gets a bit confusing. Now, zoos and wildlife parks will often use words to help the visitors understand what to expect. Now, the name given to an exhibit is unlikely to simply state what species is there. It may indicate where in the world they're found, whether there's several species all from the same environment, or possibly simply point out any special features that might be there. And the power that those words have can really change the experience for the visitor. Imagine an exhibit, for example, with African hoofstock. Simply calling it something like the Savannah Outlook is going to completely change the experience that the visitors have. Even if the field is lush and green, the visitor will understand and hopefully be transported to the Savannah Plains down in Africa. And the words we use can have a vast effect on how we feel about things, regardless of what they look like or what they actually are. I recently heard an American zookeeper using the word cage when describing one of the exhibits at the park that she worked at. For me, the word cage straight away makes me think of a small, cramped and very clinical environment. And it's certainly not a word I would use for most exhibits that you'd see in any modern zoo today. I don't ever remember being taught about this. I'd simply mimic what I heard from other people. So if I was told to go to a certain exhibit or a certain enclosure, that's the words that I would use. And it's quite interesting because my understanding of those words may be very different to that of the visitors. Because for me, exhibit is a word which I use to describe a range of different animal enclosures. But the word exhibit itself, perhaps for some people, would hark back to zoos simply being a place to put these animals on show to the public. Enclosure, on the other hand, to some people, could mean simply enclosing an animal, much in the same way that I react towards the word cage. And these words do change depending on where you are and where you work. When I worked in the States, one of the main words that they used to describe exhibits was actually habitats. Now, for me, that's a much more grandiose statement that you have taken a part of a wild environment, a wild habitat, and brought it within your zoo. So the words we use clearly do send a message, even if they're all describing exactly the same thing. Now back to my experience with visitors not considering the parks that I worked at as zoos. Within the zoo industry, there are zoos, safari parks, wildlife parks, conservation centers, and all of them have branded themselves slightly differently, possibly to send a different message to the visitors, or possibly to highlight how they are doing something in a different way to everybody else. For many people, they'll form a very personal relationship with their local collection. If your local collection is a zoo and you've spent the last few years learning about the work they do and how they achieve high welfare, good conservation and good education outputs, then chances are the words that are used within the zoo industry mean a little bit less to you. If your main exposure to the zoo industry though is a wildlife or a safari park, then it's very easy to get confused about exactly what these terms mean. And if zoo is considered even by some as a negative word, doesn't it make sense that you brand yourself a little bit differently? And that's exactly what was done in the case of Paradise Wildlife Park. After taking over Broxbourne Zoo, widely considered the worst zoo in the UK, it was important to improve the facilities there, but also to bring the public on the side. In this case, the use of Wildlife Park was a way for them to tell the world at large, but mainly the people in their local area, that things had changed. These name changes went hand in hand with first improving and replacing existing structure, and then further by redeveloping the site, providing state-of-the-art enclosures for the animals, as well as providing the best possible experience for the visitors. Paradise Wildlife Park today is a long way from what Broxbourne Zoo once was. And that's why it struck me as odd when they made this announcement. So I went down to find out a little bit more about exactly what's going on here. Firstly, is that the zoo industry is a very different place than what it was back in the 1980s. See, zoos are no longer individual attractions simply displaying animals to the public. While they can be fun and engaging for the visitors, 
Any good zoo is also going to be focused on maintaining high welfare, providing high quality education output, as well as conservation efforts and research opportunities. In part, this is outlined by the zoo license requirements, but the quality and the quantity of this is also dictated by zoo member organisations such as Biaza and Iaza. The CEO of the British and Irish Association of Zoos and Aquariums recently stated, It is my vision that all Biaza members are recognised as world leaders. The good zoos can be found at the top table of conservation, environmentalism and education and they are respected by public and government for their incredible expertise. Now while that's the CEO of a membership organization stating that, the same is also true of any good zoo anywhere in the world. If you visit any zoo or click through any zoo's website, you're more than likely to find evidence of this. Either the opportunities that they provide while at their parks, or the work that they're doing with the wider zoo industry, or the conservation organizations they may work alongside. Zoos are able to reach and educate not just people from their local area, but through social media, TV and the internet, they can find potential visitors, potential partners and even sponsors. So it's important to be clear on your position. Rebranding as Hertfordshire Zoo not only tells people exactly where they are, but tells people on the global scale exactly what it is that they are doing. As we look around the world, many of the oldest and most impressive zoos are called exactly that. So as you move into the European or the global stage, the words that we use need to be clearer. Even here in the UK, there is no legal distinction between a zoo and a wildlife park. All of them simply fall under a zoo license. So as for our original question, are wildlife parks better than zoos? Well, my answer is no, or at least not necessarily. While there are certain expectations that we might have given the name a collection has, there's nothing to say that one site couldn't be called either a wildlife park or a zoo. But luckily for us, any good zoo, regardless of its name, will be doing outstanding work for conservation, education, research, and often entertainment. So if you'd like to find out more about the ways in which zoos are able to do this, why not check out this link here.